Bibles to Joshua, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. I wasn't asked people what they know about Joshua. Most people know the song, right? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. That's, that's a great song. Uh, those of you like me who like the battle, but especially like the win, you know, winning, is, uh, winning is more fun than losing, right? <laughs> winning a battle like that, a miraculous battle, is, is pretty cool. But this is uh, actually before that. In Joshua chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priest stood, and to carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Now, according to the calendar, this is Memorial Day weekend. I'm not sure what it feels like for you, but for me, I had to pay close attention to what day it is lately. There's been no continuity, no flow from event to event, because there haven't been very many events. I have to make stuff up so I can put it on my calendar. You know, it's, uh, I usually go from one event to the other just hoping to get to the next thing on time and don't worry too much about what day it is, unless it's Sunday. Because Sunday it matters. Got to be here at 9.30 and ready to go. Other than that, it doesn't necessarily matter. Sunday's different. In some ways, it feels like it should still be March 14th. We should just pick up where we left off and start on March 14th, 2020. If I had my way, that's what we would do. We'd just say, it's going to snow earlier this year. It's March 14th. But we can't do that. I had the weirdest feeling ever the other day in the office when I tore April off the calendar and went to May. didn't look any different than April. It's just the whiteout was in different spots. You know? It made it look any different than April. It's like, okay, what do you do? Who cares? And I may not have done that until April, until May 3rd or 4th even, too. But nonetheless, we're nearing the end of May. When we celebrate Memorial Day, and I love Memorial Day because it's, it's the unofficial start of summer. I, I realize summer technically starts... June 20 something, but it's summertime. Look, it's, it's warm out there, right? It's warm. It snowed a couple weeks ago, <laughs> but it's summertime. It's unofficial start of summer. And it's, um, and as I was, I was thinking about these last couple months, it seems like it's taken a couple years for it to go by. But we think about Memorial Day, we think about all the things that we remember. And I got to thinking about the last two months, and I'm not going to lie, part of me doesn't want to remember the last two months, although it shouldn't be too hard. Nothing happened. <laughs> there's nothing to remember. And there's really, it, it, it's, it's all the stuff that didn't happen. There have been some memorable moments, but they've all been adjusted moments because something else was supposed to happen. And obviously these last two months have looked very different for people depending on your proximity to what's happening. But that's always the case. It's just this time it's different. I walked out of church one Sunday a couple weeks ago and I took out my phone and I looked at my calendar and the next thing I had to do was church next Sunday. And so there was nothing on the calendar until church next Sunday. And so, uh, like, wow. And so uh, that was weird. Part of me liked that. A part of me didn't. Because for the first time in years, I think I was bored. I forgot what that felt like. But it wasn't as though nothing was supposed to happen. But rather, everything that was supposed to happen got changed or canceled. It's gone. The time is gone. It can't be made up. All we have are the memories, both of them. And although pretty soon I'll be looking at the calendar and have three things to do at one time, I have to pick one and pass on the other two. It's got to feel a little weird, isn't it? To not be able to do something because you have something else to do after we spent two months doing nothing. And so that's right. Because how can we go from nothing to do to too much to do? But I guess that's how it goes. And we have to figure it out. I can't wait, to be honest with you. 
I need all of you to hold me accountable on this one and never, ever, ever again let me complain about having too much to do. If I do that, I'm not sure what to tell you to do. Don't, don't, don't hurt me too bad. But let me know. Don't complain about having too much to do. I, 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 uh, just be with me on that. So here we are. It's Memorial Day. It's a day to remember the past. Those who perished while serving our country. And, and really we really all those who've perished. And we decorate graves. Maybe. We have picnics. Maybe. We're rethinking some of this stuff. We have services where we honor the memory of those we love. Maybe. We're not sure if we're supposed to or not. We're not sure if we're allowed to or not. We're in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Maybe. Are we? Are we feeling free and brave this weekend? Hopefully those things don't have to become something that we remember. Remember when we were free? And remember when we were brave? Let's not let that become part of Memorial Day. But whether we know it or not, we weren't the originators of this type of day. You see, in Joshua 4, right after they finish crossing the Jordan River, they do something. I know crossing the Red Sea gets a lot more attention. They came out of Egypt, they were up against the Red Sea, Pharaoh's army's in pursuit, and they have nowhere to go. They think they're going to die right there at the light. At the last minute, God comes through in a powerful way. He parts the Red Sea. They walk through on dry ground while Pharaoh's army drowns in the sea, bringing a very climactic ending to their time of slavery in Egypt. And that, my friends, is good stuff. The way they portray that in the movies is just like, yes, you feel like you were there, and you're like, yeah. That's like, that's, that's right up there with Joshua fighting the battle of Jericho. Right? Except for that's a little bit different. I mean, they came through, and when Joshua leads the people across the Jordan River, which is the second time they crossed a body of water, it wasn't quite as dramatic. At least, I've never seen it portrayed in a movie. Maybe we'll do that. You know, we sell lots of tickets and stuff. But there was no army bearing down on them to kill them or drag them back into slavery. But it was just as powerful a moment. You see God's people were entering the promised land. That wasn't a simple ho-hum moment. This was the fulfillment of a promise God made to Abraham. Get this, 700 years before. It doesn't matter how you slice it, 700 years is a long time. I mean, what, what year was it 700 years ago? 1320? What was going on in 1320? Sure, nobody knows. And, uh, you have to look it up in a history book. And keep in mind, they spent 400 of those years as slaves in Egypt. Which means for a lot of Israelites, they never experienced anything in their lives except for slavery. Stomping in mud pits all day. From the day you were born to the day you die. Now, I was feeling sorry for myself having spent two months doing little to nothing, missing all the fun activities that were planned until I thought about spending all day, every day, stomping in mud for an entire lifetime. All of a sudden, it didn't seem so bad. Because I actually find stomping in mud kind of fun at times, but not all day, every day, with, with, with slave masters threatening to whip you if, you if you didn't get it right. And so uh, you, you, you think about people, hey, what are you up to? Stomping mud. What are the kids up to? Stomping mud. What are the grandkids up to? Stomping mud. Same mud, different day, 400 years, slogging the mud. Then finally, Moses shows up with a calling from God to deliver the people. And before you know it, not only do they have to keep up with their quota of bricks, but they've got to gather their own straw, too. It got worse before it got better. Isn't that funny? I think sometimes they get worse before they get better. And I had something really clever that I said a couple days ago about gathering straw, a modern-day example of that. I totally can't remember. But it was really good. Imagine a really good anecdote coming right now, except I forgot it. About it's like making bricks without straw, and it never came back. <laughs> I don't remember where I was at when I had the thought, so I can't even go back to that spot and try to rehab the thought. But that's how it goes. Four years stomping the mud. Yet there were some, even after watching all that had happened, as soon as it got a little bit challenging, they were ready to go to Golden Calf and go back to Egypt and stomp in the mud and beg Pharaoh to let them come back. I'm not going to beg somebody to make me stomp in the mud all day. I'm not going to beg to go back to the red zone. You know? I'm begging for green zone. I'm begging for triple green zone. I'm begging for, let's forget about those even zones. <clears throat> you know? So I'm not going to beg you to go back to Egypt. 
Wow. These guys are ready to go back to Egypt. So they spent 40 years walking in circles in the desert. Now, 40 years is something most of us can get our mind around because a good, a good bit of us are, are 40 something or better years old. But 40 years is still kind of a long time to be walking around in the desert. It was a big desert, but they may have gotten dizzy after a while walking around in circles in the desert for 40 years. And finally, they're crossing the Jordan River into the Promised Land. What's the first thing they do when they cross the river? When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan River, the Lord says to Joshua in verse 4 2, Choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take 12 stones. Right from the middle of the Jordan, right where the priests were standing. Because you've got to remember, they crossed the Jordan River at flood stage. Which, I've never been there. I'm not sure, I know some of you have been there. I'm not sure if you've been to the Jordan River, where they think Joshua crossed it at flood stage. But apparently at flood stage, it's way bigger than it is at normal stage. And it flows fast. And it flows furiously. And it stopped flowing at flood stage. So they could get across. Because God is that awesome. And Joshua chooses 12 guys. And verse 5 says, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God to the middle of the Jordan, right where the priests were standing. Take a rock, a stone on your shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of Israel, and serve as a sign among you. And in the future, when your children ask, What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off with the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial for the people of Israel forever. It says, now that's how you do Memorial Day Israelite style. They build a monument of sorts, of stones. And Joshua was telling the people, when your kids ask you what it means, you better be able to tell them. Right? You better be able to tell them. Because it's important. And more than that, it's what God did for them to bring them into the promised land. Because you know, if you don't tell them, because you know what? They weren't there. There are certain things that we weren't here for. People have to tell us about them. If nobody tells me about something, I can't be expected to know, can I? Have you ever taken a test in school? And like, you didn't cover that in class. And uh, usually an argument ensues. You know? And uh, it can be debated on whether or not to cover that in class. I, I, I do tend to sympathize with the teachers after having three churches for a time. I don't remember if I said it once, twice, or three times. I, I get it. But you can't expect somebody to know something they weren't told. So when your kids ask what this means, you better be able to tell them. Because if you don't tell them, they're not going to know what it means. And they're going to forget. They're going to forget. You know, uh, it, it was important for God's people to remember what he did for them. It's still important for God's people to remember what he has done for them. And when our kids ask us about it, we better be ready to tell them. We need to be able to tell them what God has done for us. We need to be able to tell them what others went through in order to give us the freedom that we enjoy. Because without sounding stupid, we need to remember so we don't forget. We need to tell the next crew so they don't forget. It's not, it's not, it's not a matter of them forgetting. It's a matter of them not knowing in the first place. Hey, Dad, what do those rocks mean? And if Israelite Dad says, oh, they're going to forget that God rescued them and brought them into the promised land. We can't forget that. We can't forget that. It, it, it's, it, it, and again, we, we've got to remember. So we don't forget. What's the best way to not forget? Write it down. Rose said, write it down. Make, make, sack a bunch of stones in the corner. You know, uh, we, 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 we do it a little bit differently now. We just etch your name on the thing. This is dedicated to memory of stones. That makes it easy to not forget because it's not just a stone. It's a stone with writing on it. Well, even I can remember that. Right? We need to remember. Because we celebrate, so we don't forget. Because we know that those who don't learn, or those who don't remember from history, what do they do? They condemn and repeat it. And I remember growing up, your history teachers always said that all the time to make you pay attention. Because you don't want to repeat 10th grade history. But that's not what it means. We don't learn from good things or bad things and remember them. We do the same stupid thing again. I don't want to do anything stupid, let alone twice. So in this world and weekend, let's celebrate what God has done for us to bring us salvation. That's, that's the best. But then what others have done to enable us to live in a free land. Because if we forget, we ain't get to enjoy either. Right? Because it's uh, uh because we do live in a land of the free and the home of the great. And we I want to stay that way. I hope you do too. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for those. 
that have gone before us. We thank you, Lord, for those uh, those twelve those twelve men of Israel, Lord, who gathered those stones and put them in a pile, Lord, so they could remember forever what you did for them. Lord, we have various things we have to remind us what you've done, Lord, what others have done, Lord, to bring us to where we are. Lord, and fill us with your spirit, Lord, that we would on this memorial day we would remember. We would remember, Lord, and then we would we would be that you've called us to be because of of what's been done for us, to us, sometimes with us. But Lord, we need to remember. Remember who we are, remember who we belong to. Lord, and keep us full of your spirit, Lord. As, as we as we worship you together in your name. Amen.